The following video is a brief tutorial on how to use the new meshing functionality that has come in as part of the 27th of May release of the Enforce 4.4 beta. To access the new meshing tool, you go to the Point Cloud Tools tab and click on 3D Meshing. Okay, now standard Enforce Designer will be able to mesh up to 10 million points. Uh, seeing as a lot of point clouds are actually a series of overlapping scans, um, the dedensification factor here will quite often get the number of points down under that 10 million point. Obviously, it depends what you're trying to mesh, but usually um, you can fluctuate the dedensification factor to reduce the number of points you are meshing. There are two paid tiers uh, above the 10 million point limit, one at 30 million and one for unlimited. If you try to create more data than the uh, software will allow, then it will actually warn you. Um, so if you try and generate or try and mesh more than 10 million points in Standard Enforced Designer, it will warn you and it won't let you proceed. So you would need to increase the dedensification factor or reduce the amount of information on screen because it's going to mesh any information that's on screen. So you can use groups and things and limit boxes to cut the data down to just the area that you need so that you can st try and stay under that 10 million limit. The dedensification factor is essentially a 3D grid, so by putting a value of 10 in there, I'm, or 10 mil in there, I'm fundamentally saying reduce this data to a one point per cubic centimeter. Um, the auto density is uh, a variable which controls how the um, algorithm, or rather, controls the size of the triangles that it tries to create. Okay, that coupled with the spacing factor is what gives you your fine detail or your coarse detail. So the auto density will be reported at the end of the uh, calculation, at the end of the meshing, so that you can see what kind of size it was using to mesh the triangles. Uh, and then there's post-processing, which you can then set to none, so that you see the raw triangles. Moderate, which includes some smoothing and some optimizations. And then maximum, which is a lot of smoothing and a lot of optimizations, so that you can kind of get the number of points uh, and triangles down, so that when you export the mesh, you don't necessarily find you've got a, a mesh which is unusable. And smooth uh, is what's used to essentially remove some of the sort of the fuzz. So if I was to zoom in on this data set here, you can see that there's a little bit of um, uh, noise in the data. So by smoothing, you're actually helping to remove that from the algorithm before it actually does some post, some post smoothing uh, after the measure has been created. So with these default settings as they are, I'm just going to hit calculate. I'll move this clock over so we can see how long it takes. I'm running this on a very, very modest uh, i7. It's a, it's a good, I think, seven years old. So it's not going to set the world on fire. There you go. So it was ultimately meshing uh, 1,508,707 points. So 777 points, which gave us um, 120,000 triangles just over and 60,000 vertices and the density factor it arrived at was 51 mil so you can kind of think of it as a as a ball of 50 centimeter 50 mil ball and that was rolling around the surface and that if you can't if the surface if that ball doesn't go through the surface then it basically was able to mesh it so if i turn the point cloud off there you go okay so you can start to see there's an impression of the surface change there um which is you know it's a good overall mesh and um, the idea of the meshing really is to uh, clients a service that they can then do monitoring against so that we can then come back in a month's time say rescan the bridge and then we can actually colorize the new scan based on deviation from this mesh if you wanted more detail for instance then we can just turn up the settings so if i set that back to normal okay now i could uh well i will need to lower the denensification factor so let's say five millimeters don't forget that's five mil in each axis so it's actually generating a lot more data Okay, uh, and I'll leave the spacing factor on two. Again, if you lower the spacing factor too much, you can start introducing gaps into the data. So it's best to let that uh, leave it on two and let the auto density work itself out based on the data it's actually modeling. And I will hit calculate again. Okay, there we go. So by upping that to 5 mil, we actually meshed 2,746,092 points, so nowhere near the 10 million. 
it has 498,000 triangles and 244,000 vertices, and the density value it arrived at was 33 mil. So when I press OK, if I turn off the point cloud, you can see, so now we've actually got a, a much neater impression there of the change in surface. Um, but if I put it in wireframe, you can see that we actually have less triangles, you know, where there's less change, but it's keeping, obviously, keeping the triangles where it needs them. So that's the whole point of the meshing. Oh, sorry. That's the whole point of the moderate post-processing. Okay. So if I wanted to now, I can then, uh, I can commit this mesh as a, and if I hit commit mesh, fundamentally that turns it into a DTM, but obviously a DTM would have no real uh, sense with, there'd be no sense in making a DTM because obviously we've got overlapping triangles. So you'd basically then instead choose export mesh. So that's the simple example. And instead, what we're going to do now is I'm going to now load in a slightly more complex one. Okay, so here I have a reasonably dense scan of a, of a church entrance. Okay, if I zoom in, you can see we've got quite a lot of data here. And we've got some quite nice stonework. Um, and what I'm going to try and do is, is see what results we get when we mesh this. So I'm going to go to Tools, 3D Mesh. So it's remembering the settings from the, the bridge. So I'll leave them as they are for the moment. And I will just hit Create Mesh. OK, so let's see how that looks. So if I zoom in and turn off the point cloud. OK, so you can see the stonework is it's kind of okay, but it's a little bit for my it's for my taste. It's a little bit over smoothed. Um, I think we might be able to do better there. So what I'm going to do is turn the point cloud back on and go from a de-densification factor of one, or say five mil. So it's go down to two millimeters. And I'm going to turn off the smoothing and let's see what we get. Okay, so you can see now the mesh has changed slightly and we've got some holes now where we didn't have them before. So if I turn off the point cloud. Okay, so we've got a slightly neater uh, and more rounded surface there. And you can see up here, we've got the shape of the arch now quite nice and neat. Okay, so if I reduce the settings any more, I might start getting some larger holes. So I'm going to quit whilst I'm ahead there. And um, as I said, um, to get this information out into other packages, then you can just choose export mesh. Okay, so I'm going to go from the default to IFC. Uh, just whilst I'm here, the OSGB format is the native format of the 3D viewer. So if you save it into that format and reload it back in afterwards, it will actually load very quickly indeed, because there's no conversion necessary. It doesn't have to do any work really, it just has to load it straight into memory. Um, but for now, I'm going to go to IFC, save that. It says you want to proceed. I do. And now what I'll do is I will load that into the free Autodesk viewer. So here's one I've done earlier. And as you can see, shape, oops, shape of the uh, stone is preserved in the IFC format. And obviously that can then be loaded into Revit or any other BIM package as needed. And that concludes the demo.